Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's mid-month mini mission inspiration time and for June the mid-month mission is the word open. So when I look at this uh, it reads as a doorway, a window or a gate free from obstruction and open to new ideas, a large space or an empty area or void. Now for me that made me think immediately of kind of like open space, so like an open night sky. And then I um, thought about something flying through the air on a night sky. So that's what kind of came to me. So that's what I'm going to try and achieve today for this art journal page. And the word open also, for me, makes me think of an open mind and open to new ideas which is what this bit is here so that's exactly what I'm going to use for my quote off phrase for this art journal page so to start off with I haven't done um, a circle journal page for absolutely ages and I think this one's going to lend itself to it um, I had a little bit of an accident cutting out so it's not a perfect circle so I'm going to use that side as the side where I attach it back into my art journal so this is what I'm going to work on. It's watercolour cardstock, it's 300 GSM or 140 pound and it has a little bit of an open grain, um, like a basket, well canvas texture I should say, not basket weave, like a canvas texture to it. Um, so I'm going to work on that. So to start off with I'm going to give the page a coating of black gesso. So I'm using Dina Waker Media black gesso but I'm not going to go completely all the way over. I'm going to leave some space around the outside. So I'm just going to take the black gesso. You can see that, um, that texture now as I'm painting on the, uh, the page. So like I said, I'm going to leave a little bit going all the way around the outside. I'm not going really heavy all the way. So I'm going to leave it a little bit fuzzy towards the edges, almost like it's got a little bit of a halo around it. So heavier in the middle, fading off to grey at the sides and around the edge. And I'm not using diagonal brush strokes for any particular reason other than it's easy for me to go because I'm right handed. Just get some of the strokes. There seems to be a line there. I think that'll do it for the gessoed base coat. That will do. So I'll put my brush into some water, pop the gesso away, and then we'll just give that a quick blast with the heat gun and get it all dry. So my night sky is now dry but it's obviously not complete unless it's got some stars so for that we need some splatters so I've got my Dina Wakely white paint and I'm just going to just add a little bit to my little polyprop mat Have a little spritzer bottle with some water my trusty fan brush not quite wet enough and then I'm just going to add some splatters for stars in the background that'll do don't want to go mad don't want to overdo it Okay, 
grab the heat gun, let's get that dried off. Okay, so my stars are now dry, so I now want to start building up my moon somewhere up here. So for that I'm going to use my lunar stencil. So this is a two-part stencil, so it will have the shape of the moon there, and then here we have the bits that form those shapes and mottlings on the moon. So I'm going to just stick my stencil down about there, and then using that same Dina Wakeley paint, the white, I've got a little bit of cosmetic sponge and I'm going to just go around with that paint, probably need a lot more, and I can build up the colour get a base coat down first and you can go as bright white as you want on this, now obviously I want to cover um, the stars and some of that black so I'm going to keep on going and building up the layers try not to move the stencil and because it doesn't have to be completely perfect because you are going to be overlaying another image onto the top in a minute or I will be anyway so let's just add a little bit more to pull that off now. So I think I need to dry that first and then we can add another layer on top. Okay, I think that's white enough for the moment. So again, just quickly get that dried off and I'll be right back. Okay, so my moon shape is now dry. I just need to mix up some grey now. Uh, I don't have the Dina Wakeley Elephant, which is like a, a, a grey colour. So I'm going to mix my own just using some black and white. And I'll just use the same sponge just to mix too dark. So I'll just add in some more white. Until I'm kind of happy with the grey colour. That's about right. So now I can take my stencil, position it over the top of the moon. So I reckon about there. So I can see white all the way. Yep. And then I can just add some of that grey
just build up that kind of mottling. Now I'm just going to grab a small stencil brush because some of these smaller lines don't necessarily always get I'll pick up the paint. So I think that should should do me. with that. So I need to get that dried once again and I'll be right back. So I've put my moon to one side now that it's nice and dry. I've got my stamp platform out which needs a very good clean and um, extremely dirty. I'm going to stamp an image down now onto some um, smooth cardstock. Now the image I've got is this giant dragonfly from Indigo Blue. So this is one of their newest releases. Um, I've got a small dragonfly, a dinky dragonfly, but this one's huge. It's fantastic size. Um, in real size, it's about 12 and a half centimeters right the way across. Now in old money, that's five inches. So the wingspan is huge. So from top of the feet, or it's about just over three inches, which is about eight centimeters. So it's a fair, decent size. So, and you also get the ladybird and a little butterfly on there too. So it's a good set. Now, to ink up, I don't want to ink up in black. I'm going to ink up using the watering can, archival ink. So now this is a fairly new one for me. When I say new one, it's a new ink pad, not a new colour. So I'm going to ink this up. Make sure I get a real decent coverage. Now the only reason I've detached the lid is so you can see me stick me um, st inking it up. All right, then I'm going to stamp it down, making sure I get a decent impression. There we go. Beautiful. I'm going to leave that stamp on because I'm going to need it again later. So I'll take that cardstock out. Just put the stamp platform down and then I'm going to grab um, I need a little polyprop or even a paint mat, that'll do. That will do, that will do. Okay, so I have some mica pigment powders. Now these are called, this is called Mermaid's Tail. And you can see that beautiful shimmer. And these are just ordinary kind of like pigment powders, which react to water. In the same way that brushos uh, and that kind of stuff do. So I'm just going to add a little bit onto my mat, just wet my brush and then pick up some of that colour and then dub it back down into the water. Now you can see how that colour has just gone yummy. Now you can add in as much as you want so to get a deeper kind of colour if you want to. Now. The more you add, the thicker it gets. The thicker it gets, the, the more opaque it will get. If you want it to be translucent, don't add a lot of the pigment powder, the luscious powder, into it. But if you do want to go opaque, then keep adding more and more and more until you actually get to kind of like a paste colour. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over the top of the wings. All right, well, let me see if I can hold that up now. You see that shimmer that's in there? It's beautiful. Just go a little bit over the, over the edge. OK, 
at that. Gorgeous. I'll do the same at this side. And then lift that up and you can see how that shimmer has gone onto those wings. Beautiful. Just clean off my brush. So that's pretty much cleaned off the brush. So that colour was Mermaid's Tail it's called, which is a really cool name. Now I want to add some purple um, just on the body. Now I've got three or four different shades of purple from Indigo Blue. <laughs> I've got Rose Bronze crushed velvet, purple purple, and one called ultraviolet. Now I like the kind of ultraviolet one because it's almost like a lilac -y colour or a lavender colour. So I'm going to use that one. So I'll do exactly the same thing again. Just find a spot. Not going to need a lot. Brush is wet. Just pick some of that up and give it a mix. You can see the mica powder swirling around in there. And then I'm just very gently, I'm just going to go over the dragonfly's body and the head. I think that will do me. Don't need to add any more. So I'll just grab some tissue. Okay, done with that. And I'm just going to give this a quick blast with a heat gun. And then I'll hold that up so you can see the shimmer. It's beautiful. Right, so now that we've done that. He says, I want black. I want black. And I'm going to bring my stamp platform back in. And I'm going to put that back down in exactly the same place. And then grabbing the black, I'm going to ink up back over the dragonfly. Now that just reinforces the image that we had there. Just adds that layer over the top and that means now I can quite easily sit and fussy cut my little dragonfly out. So I'll get it dried off and then I'll cut it all out. Not going to include the legs. Ain't nobody got time to cut legs out. So I'm just going to cut around the body and then I'll be right back. Okay, so dragonfly is cut out, but I just want to go around the edges just to get rid of those raw white cut sides. Just to kind of finishes it off. Make sure I get all the way in. So now you've seen me do this a little bit. I will disappear off, finish it off and be back in a few minutes. 
back with my page. So all my edges have now been coloured and I've put a just a little circular foam pop dot if you like on the back and I'm just going to lay that down around about there which allows those wings to lift a little bit and then just here on the side I've got one of the Signo white opaque rollerball pens and I'm just going to write And I think I'm going to call that done. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels without whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you.